to another one of my walking videos. Today I am out in North Yorkshire. I've come to the old village of Stillingfleet, about eight miles south of York, and I'm going to be trekking along the River Ouse, roughly, another eight miles towards Selby. On the way there, we're going to go through the village of Kelfield, cross over the Kaywood Swing Bridge, which when I tried to do this walk in February, a couple of months ago, was uh, stopped for foot and, and vehicle traffic because of the severe flooding. But today we're going to go over into Kaywood, look at the old church there, then follow a road down to Wistow, another old uh, village with another old late medieval parish church, and then we're going to go into Selby where I'll have a look at the, um, the Abbey Church there. So it's going to be a good walk and um, I hope you enjoy these clips and we're going to be exploring a bit of the history of the landscape in this part of North Yorkshire. Seven or eight miles northwest of Selby, Stillingfleet Beck runs through the village of Stillingfleet, joining the River Ouse a mile away. Houses line the wet hollow along its path through the village, separated by wide grass verges, and in times of flooding, the Beck creates a great lake and has in living memory made the road over the bridge impassable. St Helen's Church is reached by a lich gate of oak and stone and sits in a fine setting on raised land overlooking the village. Like many churches in the area, restoration has not spoilt its charm. The pride of St Helen's is its south doorway, and the old south door itself. The stone doorway has been said to be the finest of its type in Yorkshire. The original 12th century oak door remains in situ, but is sensibly no longer in use, and the main entrance to the church today is via the north door. Its early ironwork decorations are extraordinary. There are two C-shaped hinges, finished with serpentine heads, a wrought iron chain, a representation of a ship, and two figures, perhaps Adam and Eve, under the remains of a tree. We'll start here in Stillingfleet at the church, come up here and down here. Then we will come through the fields down here into Kelfield, then along the marshes along the bank of the Ouse, over the Kaywood Swing Bridge, past the castle, loop back towards the church, then come down here, Marsh Lane, into Wistow, and then we will actually come down here down Blackfen Lane and then curve round here into Selby where you can see the Abbey Church there All around on both sides of the river is fertile agricultural land a complex network of dikes and drains runs through this wet old marsh and farmland in the villages and old towns around Selby, the medieval village plans are today lined with 18th and 19th century local red brick and clay pantile roof farmhouses and farmers' cottages. Here lived the men and women working the fields of potatoes, peas, celery and other crops. Of the Anglican parish churches in this walk, they are dignified medieval buildings with prominent perpendicular west towers constructed in neat limestone ashlar, and it has been said of them that the boldness of their conception is surprising in this land over which the memory of the marsh still hangs. Rising out of Stillingfleet, you pass through flat fields into the smallest village on this walking route, Kelfield. Mentioned in the Doomsday Book as a small estate, today it consists of largely new builds or heavily altered farmhouses. Kelfield does give us one strange tale about a prophetess who arrived in the summer of 1833. Local and national press were gripped by the story of a young girl called Hannah Beedham, who became known as the Kelfield Prophetess. Hannah described having a vision where she was told the date of her death. Thousands of people allegedly came to Kelfield to be present at her death. The newspapers reported Hannah Beedham's exploits with growing cynicism and glee when she failed to die, as promised, on August 1st, 1833, at 9 o'clock in the evening. Hannah died a few years later, aged only 27. There is a record of Hannah's burial in an unmarked grave on Christmas Eve, 1839, at Holy Trinity Church, Goodrumgate, in York. 
Leaving Kelfield, I walked along the raised riverbank flood defence towards the Kaywood Swing Bridge, opened in July 1872 to replace a ferry service that had crossed the river centuries before. Kaywood is a complex medieval settlement built around Kaywood Castle and Garth, a former palace of the Archbishop of York, which forms its heart. Although developed to accommodate modern farm and town dwellings in the 18th and 19th centuries, Kaywood retains its tight network of ancient roads, lanes and alleyways, historic shop fronts and listed houses, largely protected by being in a conservation area. Although the fight against modern development wages on, in order to maintain the appeal of its historic setting, you can see small details such as the traffic lights which have been set back from the narrow pavements, and modern traffic signage is kept relatively discreet. English Heritage undertook a survey of Kaywood Castle Garth in 2005 and found evidence of the palace's extensive gardens, ornamental ponds, only one of which still has water, and an orchard surrounded by a now dry moat. All that remains of the medieval palace today is the 15th century gatehouse and its east and west brick ranges, which are a landmark trust property today. The parish church shows signs of different building phases. The interior is spacious and contains some interesting stained glass, both ancient and modern. One north aisle window is a memorial to those of the parish who fell in both world wars. It was dedicated in 1924 and made by Thomas Curtis, Ward and Hughes of London. Cloaks of the Knights bear the badges of the West Yorkshire Regiment, East Yorkshire Regiment and Durham Light Infantry. Marsh Lane heads straight out of Kaywood towards the Wistow Lordship, through marshland long since drained but still liable to flooding. Land on either side of the lane is typical of field enclosure between roughly the mid-18th and mid-19th centuries. A broad straight lane surrounded on both sides by rectangular parcels of land that replaced the earlier open field systems. Enclosure was thereby achieved in this case by agreement of landowners to convert the fields into parcels or small closes farmed by individuals. In fact, for a bigger example, we only have to go back over the River Ouse to Stillingfleet to see nearby evidence of intense land enclosure. Wistow's parish church was locked, but has perhaps the most interesting building fabric of the parish churches on this route the crowning glory of which is the stately west tower overlooking the narrow bend in the road around its curtilage. That's it, we've uh, gone from Stillingfleet through Kelfield over Kaywood Swing Bridge through Kaywood and we've done Wistow as well, we've seen the parish church there and now it's a long walk down Black Fen Lane and over a very small bridge called Nut Bridge and then we'll be at Selby. By Black Fen Lane you can arrive at Selby, a town which is not given much praise today, but the marketplace and the grounds of the Abbey Church are as good of a reward for arriving at your destination than any. Ella Pontefract, a lover of the Yorkshire landscape, wrote in the 1930s that Selby had in its shop windows signs for pea pickers in Wistow who should bring their own baskets to work. Once the pea pickers had brought their peas to market, the potato pickers would come with their spuds and the seasons could be followed by the life of the land. <laughs>